Okay. I happened to get something new. Uh, not new, really old, but uh, something I had never seen before. Um, and I figured if I haven't seen it, some other people might not have seen it as well. Um, while this is talking about this, I'm going to start this back burner up. And get the water going. This is a Drippolator coffee pot. Um, from what I've read, they stopped making them in the 40s, so it makes it about 70 years old, at least. Um, it's basically a manual drip coffee pot. Uh, so how it works. Lid. Basket at the top for coffee grounds. Uh, sorry, basket at the top for water. Basket in the bottom for coffee grounds. And a pot. Um, Mark Drippolator by Enterprise. Uh, Macon, Georgia, USA. I don't see that too much anymore. Um, I said I had never seen one of these. I've seen, we have percolators at the cabin, but I've never seen a manual drip coffee pot before. Um, so, when I first got it, the, kind of, the whole thing kind of looked like that. Basically uh, tarnished and been in the basement uh, for, for a long time. So I cleaned it up. Uh, polish the outside and uh, made my first pot of coffee there tonight on it. Um, it's in pretty good shape. There's a couple little dings and whatnot, but not too bad. Goes back together like that, and the water will drip from the top through the coffee into the pot at the bottom. Um, doesn't you don't heat the water up in this, which is different than like a percolator, but. Uh, um, it's kind of cool. I'm just going to go to the guest cabin, I'm pretty sure. Um, so you still need a teapot or another pot to heat the water up on. Um, but uh, I guess they make them up to very large sizes. Like I saw a lot of 14 cups and 20 cups. This is a 7 cup variety. Tonight I am going to try it out uh, with just two scoops and filling it up to the 3 cup mark. Um, there's markings on the side of the can for three, five, and seven. And then on the side of the coffee pot, there's also markings three, five, and seven. You can see them from the inside. This I can see them from the inside, three, five, and seven. Um, it's gonna take a couple minutes for that to start to boil. Um, something else we happened to get that was really kind of cool was a nice old, uh, new, new to me, cast iron pan. I got it, it was all rusty, and uh, so I went ahead and used uh, number two steel wool and cleaned it up, and then uh, two coats of Crisco and two sessions of base cake baking, and it looks good as new, and it's really nice compared to my lodge ones, and that the bottom is very smooth. Um, my lodge ones are not smooth at the bottom, They're, they have a pebbly texture. Um, I don't know if over time will wear off to something similar, but uh, I think these are both from the same vintage. This is probably 70 years old as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm put a paper towel on the bottom of that. I'm not sure if you're supposed to or not. At least half a paper towel. Just see if we can get less coffee grounds that way in your coffee. to do this or not. Seems like a logical thing to do. I didn't get my coffee scoop. And scoop. Two scoops. Probably about twice as much as I am. I'm going to take about half a scoop here. come back once the water boils.
Oh, well, that was interesting. Once I shut the video off, my uh, my fire pager went off. We had a small little fire not too far from here. So it's been about half an hour. I turned the stove off and ran out the door. Uh, so now that I have hot water, I am going to fill it up to the mark for the three cup and wait. It's easier to see it from this way. And you can hear it tripping. So you now you just wait for that to finish up. It takes about five minutes or so. Um, because it's aluminum, you can just you can keep it hot on the stove. Um, take this top here and put it on the bottom. Um, I'm not gonna do it tonight because it's 9:30 and I'll have one cup and that'll be plenty. But uh, yeah, now I wait again. While I'm waiting, I mentioned something else I've been playing with. My first ever batch of maple syrup. Um, we tapped uh, trees of the cabin, and uh, last this past weekend the weather was good. Uh, we need cold nights, warm days, and we had that until, or sorry, last Thursday, Friday we had that. Uh, sorry for my dog's toenails, they rather noisy. Uh, we had that at the cabin, so we um, harvested about 40 times as much as this. That's how much you have to dehydrate in order to get down to one bottle. We brought home the leftovers and I finished it up on the stove. Uh, we brought home four of these bottles for me to get this one um, final. Um, now my dog is drinking because he really wants the, the knowing you all in this video. Um, I didn't do any bonus. Cool it down. Um, I didn't do any temperature um, you know, method for this. I'm going to try that with the next batch. Just basically heat it up until uh, it stuck to the spoon when I poured it off and that was that. Um, someone, uh, I posted up online, someone said that uh, one way to get a good, res consistent result is to uh, heat it up, boil water, the same thing you're boiling this and figure out what your temperature for boiling water is exactly because it'll vary a tiny bit depending on conditions and elevation and all that type of stuff but basically this should boil 9 degrees when this is 9 degrees warmer than the boiling temperature of water you get, you're done so I will try that next time um, also looks like we could do a little filtering um, I don't know how that's going to work, we'll have to figure it out because we do have a bit of sediment at the bottom um, and I'm hoping it doesn't crystallize because that's one of the things that can happen if you uh, mess the temperature up too much. Um, you can either have crystallization or if you have too much water you can get mold. Um, but you pour it in hot, put the jar lid on top and as it cools it will suck the air in just like a canning jar will and now that it's good for storage as long as they have the, the mixture right. So let me check my... this again. I think it expands a bit when it's hot. I have a hard time getting the lid on. There it goes. Um, I'm going to pause this again and I'll wait about a couple minutes and let this finish up. And I'm back and it's done dripping. So I'm going to take the top off. Put it aside for a moment. This off, put this in the sink. Let that dry out. Pull the coffee ground pot out. Put this top on here. Get the coffee cup out. Perfect. So, uh, like I said, that is a dripolator coffee pot. I had never seen one. Um, I'm not sure if I'll ever see somebody else's. I'm not sure how common they are. Maybe I just happen to live under a rock somewhere. But, uh, 
if you if you come across one, it's not a bad little coffee pot for the cabin or even for the house for for emergencies. If you already have a teapot around, most people do. Um, you know, you can leave this uh, in the basement or you know, waiting for well, I don't know, if electricity goes out and still have coffee. So with that, hopefully this weekend I'll get down to the cabin and uh, make some maple syrup. Um, one way or the other, we're going to get more syrup made. Uh, my father-in-law is going to go down at least. I'm pretty sure I'm going down someday. So, um, until then, thanks for watching.